Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier and this is Ship Updates, or would be Ship Updates if there were Ship Updates to be had, but as we're on the Christmas break, sadly, nothing really going on. But what I figured I would do is I would steal CIG's idea because you know, I'm a pirate, that's what we do, and I would do a review of 2017. And I think that kind of in making this video, it, it's important to say that right up front, there were stumbles during 2017, but I think overall, in the end, we ended up in a pretty good place. And I think some of the things that happened, even some of the things that people didn't agree with or some of the things that angered people, I think overall, even though in the moment it felt really bad, it kind of pushed a lot of things in the right direction. And I think overall, those individual moments, I think, kind of benefited the game. Now, the first of these moments was, of course, the Anvil Hurricane, which kind of seemed to be a bit of a futuristic rehash of a World War II fighter. Now, that was the Bolt and Paul Defiant. Now, overall, the idea was interesting. It was a kind of a cool idea, and a lot of people, myself included, were kind of looking at it and kind of thinking of ways that it could be used, advantages that could be garnered from the ship. And it seemed to be a pretty damned good idea. There was only one concern. And that was, of course, the turret mounted on the back. Now, of course, this is a manned turret. When you basically slave the guns or it's unmanned, they all fire forward. But when you have a person in there, they can turn and they can shoot in all kinds of different directions. And this was the interesting idea that I was talking about. This was something that a lot of people were looking at and kind of going like, this could be really good. But the problem was, is that in the current inception of Star Citizen, which was 263, turret gameplay was not in a very good state. In fact, it was almost entirely unplayable, and a lot of players shared those concerns during the concept sale. Now, CIG, of course, through Chris Roberts, in fact, stepped up and said that they were going to give turret gameplay a rework. And get it improved to the point that it would justify a ship like this but not only this ship but there are many other ships in star citizen which feature multiple turrets and this would overall be an improvement not just for the hurricane but for so many of these ships and even though some people bought the hurricane some people didn't a lot of people shared these concerns and overall many of the ships in star citizen benefited from that pushback on this concept design. Next up, we have the Banu Defender. Now, this is probably one of the ships that is going to have one of the most profound impacts down the road on so many ship designs because of the pushback that this design received. Now, at its core, there were a lot of really good ideas that were put into the Defender. This was a defensive ship for Banu trading fleets. It was built more as a bit of a sniper slash fighter. It had separate pilot and gunner, so the, the gunner would shoot, the pilot would fly. In the end, it was a pretty solid idea and something worth seeing in the universe. The problem with it was, was these two prongs that jutted out of the front of it which hampered both the gunner and the pilot's view. Now, some people kind of counter-argued that, well, the Van Duel Glaive is more or less the same idea, but if you look at the Van Duel Glaive, the pilot is perched farther forward, the arms are more pushed out, and so they don't really interfere with the pilot's viewpoint that much. Going back to the Defender, the difference is obvious. Now, some people took the view that by criticizing the design that we were personally insulting the artist or that we were simply attacking the design because it was bold and it was different and too many of the ships in Star Citizen were samey, that they were all, you know, all basically, you know, just an evolution of uh, fighters from this day and age and that, you know, they, they were all very boring designs. but you can make a lot of bold design choices while still adhering to a few core concepts. I mean, it's, it's kind of like animals. If you look at mammals on the planet Earth, they come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes and different configurations, but they all kind of adhere to a few core concepts, you know? And 
you know, they all have hearts, they all have brains, they all have lungs. The lungs are kind of held inside the rib cage where they're protected, that sort of thing. There's these basic ideas that kind of govern those designs. They're Darwinian designs, but in the end, you know, they all kind of work off of that same idea, that same platform, yet they can come in so many different shapes and sizes. Now, the overall benefit of the Defender was that later on, ships like the Javelin, the 600i, got their cockpit views improved. You know, the 600i had the two beams removed from the front of its cockpit. The Defender had that cross member across the front of the bridge removed. And even the Nox, the Xi'an space bike that came out just a little bit, little bit late. I mean, CIG, when they released the Nox, I mean, almost immediately released a Bug Smashers video where Disco Lando and the artist who had designed the Nox were working on the ship and they were acknowledging that the view from the Nox for the pilot sucked and that they were go going through and experimenting with different ideas to change and improve it. Now, of course, there are still many people who feel that backers like myself who nitpick these things and voice their opinions should just shut up and let CIG do their work. But I think that as a backer, we do have a bit of a responsibility that if we do spot something that's wrong, that we should kind of point it out and say something about it. Like, for instance, creating a bullpup rifle that ejects its spent casings directly in the face of the operator. Probably not a good idea. Now, I say these things with a touch of humor, and you might think that by the things that I've listed off that, you know, oh, you're just talking about all these problems and you're just, you know, pointing out all these shortcomings and blah, blah, blah. No, I, my overall outlook on Star Citizen honestly after 2017 has never been as positive as it has been now as it is now right yeah i've never been more pleased with how star citizen has turned out than i am right now i think that you know even though you know cutlass fiasco aside the feedback from the community has certainly gotten better. CIG has certainly now stepped back and started to incorporate a lot better ideas on how they do things. Um, I think that, you know, we're, we are in this iterative process where we're kind of, you know, when you look at Star Citizen, when, it, when we very, at the very beginning, when we got Arena Commander, and you see how the game has evolved since then, how the ships have evolved since then. One of the parts of that evolution has been player feedback. And, you know, just because somebody says, you know, I don't like this doesn't mean that they're attacking Star Citizen. And a lot of these people who are expressing these ideas, you know, some of them are subjective. Some of them are like, oh, well, I wish the coloring was different or, oh, you know, this, that or the other thing. But some of them are real quality of, of life enhancements that players are suggesting. Some of them have real practical value. And I think that even though there is that element within the community that immediately tries to shut any of that down, there I think there are a lot more people who are open to those ideas and who are listening. And I think even at CIG, I think those doors have been pushed open a lot more over the last year than they were before. When you look at the concept ships that came out at the end of 2017, I'm talking, of course, about the Hammerhead and the Hawk. These two ships, I think, are reflective of community feedback and CIG's response. When the Polaris came out, a lot of people were looking for a larger military vessel that was more gun oriented. And the Hammerhead is that to a T. A lot of people were also looking for smaller profession based ships, you know, and the Hawk is that smaller bounty hunter ship, and it also appears to be a quite solid fighter with an EMP, which could provide some very interesting gameplay. These are two really great ships that CIG has put forward, and I think that it's reflective of the feedback that they've gotten from the community and their own evolution internally of their ideas. And, I, you know, a lot of that is, once again, exposure to the community and their feedback. So I think that overall, 
2017 was a very long year. It was a very tough year. For the developers, it was a year of trying to get all these different systems and all these different ideas mashed together and working in 3.0, which was, of course, something that would be required to release Squadron 42 as well. So they had their work cut out for them and they were definitely doing it. Even when creating videos and I was talking about, well, 3.0 still isn't coming out, 3.0 is still a ways away. I would say that, you know, I when I look at these videos and I see all these guys working and they're doing the burn down and all that, I don't see a bunch of people that aren't working, you know. I don't see a bunch of people who have their feet up on their desk not doing anything. It's obvious that the work is being done. And for players, you know, it was a tough year because it was almost an entire year without an update in Star Citizen. It was a long time. And a lot of us kind of felt like, you know, we were constantly being teased with videos of all the cool stuff that was going to happen, but we just didn't know when it was going to happen. So it was really tough and a big exercise in patience on the part of the community. But I think in the end, when we got here at 3.0, there were some hiccups along the way, but I think it's working out pretty good, and I think it's a pretty good indication of some of the things that are yet to come in, you know, next year. 2018 is going to, of course, be a pretty huge year for Star Citizen with the release of Squadron 42. Probably. Maybe. Well, hopefully.